Hi there. I hope you're happy and healthy. It's time to snuggle down in a comfortable spot. We're going to read a story. Today we're going to read a story called Nothing by Mick Inkpen. A new baby is on the way. The family are moving out of number 47 to a bigger house round the corner. The cat has gone missing but everything else is packed and ready to go. Nothing has been left behind. The little thing in the attic at number 47 had forgotten all about daylight. It had been squashed in the dark for so long that it could remember very little of anything. Stuck beneath years of junk, it could not recall how it felt to stand up or to stretch out its arms. So long had it been there, even its own name was lost. I wonder who I am, it thought, but it could not remember. The day came when the family that lived at number 47 were to move. All day long the little thing listened to thuds and thumps and the sound of trampling feet in the house below, until at last the attic door was flung open and a large hand began to stuff cardboard boxes full of junk. The little thing felt the weight on top of it gradually lighten, and suddenly the glare of a torch beam stung its eyes. What have we got here? said a voice. Oh, it's nothing, said another. Let the new people get rid of it. The torch was switched off, the boxes were carried out, and moments later, somewhere down below, the front door slammed shut. Number 47 was empty. So that's my name, thought the little thing. Nothing. For the first time in a very long time, nothing sat up. He looked around him at the cobwebs and the shafts of dusty moonlight. Then in the quiet he heard the patter of feet, and a mouse came running towards him. New people always try to get rid of you, it said, without it introducing itself. It looked at him. Seen you under the rug. What are you? Nothing, replied nothing. Well, nothing or not, you can't stay here, not with new people coming, said the mouse. It hurried off. Nothing struggled to his feet. On unsteady legs, he followed the dusty paw prints. The mouse stopped by a moonlit gap under the eaves. Look there, it said. Good luck. With a wriggle of its tail, it disappeared under the floorboards. I used to have a tail, thought nothing. He felt sure of it. How do you think you would feel if you had been squashed in the dark for years and years? Then you squeeze through a tiny hole to find yourself under the big starry sky. Well, there are no words for that kind of feeling, so I won't try to tell you how nothing felt, except to say that he sat on the roof staring up at the moon and the stars for a very long time. He was still staring upwards as he made his way along the gutter which is why he felt straight down the drain pipe. Nothing rolled into the garden and sat up. What on earth are you? said a silky fox. The fox, for that is what it was, left the dustbin and trotted towards him. I'm nothing, said nothing. The fox sniffed at him. Its whiskers quivered, its ears pricked. I used to have ears and whiskers, thought nothing suddenly. He was sure of it. The fox spoke again. Nothing, it said disdainfully. Nothing wor worth eating, that's for sure. It trotted away silently. Nothing wandered into the garden and came across a lily pond. There a frog sat gently croaking. As nothing approached, it plopped into the water and with a kick of its stripy legs, it disappeared from view. I used to have stripes, thought nothing. I'm sure I did. The ripples cleared and nothing found himself staring at his own reflection. It was odd. It was ugly. What are you? It said to nothing sadly. A tear rolled up its face and splashed into the surface of the pond. The ugly face disappeared among the ripples. What are you? Repeated nothing. I'm a cat, said a loud voice. Who's asking? 
A big lolloping tabby cat tumbled out from behind a bush and grinned at nothing. Nothing opened his mouth to explain that he had been talking to himself and that he did not know who, what he was and that he was lost and that he had been sniffed by a horrible fox and that he was feeling very miserable. But instead he found himself shuddering and shaking as great uncontrollable sobs quivered up his little raggedy body and sat him on the ground. I don't know who I am, he howled. I don't know who I am. The cat licked him in the face. After a while, nothing stopped crying. The cat lay down beside him. Between nothing's loud sniffs, it told him all about itself. How its name was Toby, and how it came from a long line of Tobys. I live in the house, it said. At least, I used to. We moved around the corner today. They think I'm lost, but it's all the same to me. Number 47, number 97, what's the difference? It's all my patch. Do you want to see? Nothing sniffed once more and nodded. Of course you do, said the cat. It picked up nothing and sprang out the garden wall. Nothing had never ridden through the night in a cat's mouth before. It whisked him up through the branches of a tree and up onto rooftops where they sped along with the moon racing them behind the chimney pots. I'm taking you the long way round, panted the cat. It's more fun. All the while, jogging along inside nothing's head, there was a thought trying to get out. It felt like something important. It had something to do with the cat. The cat jumped the fence at number 97 and trotted in through the back door. He found an old man dozing on a chair, surrounded by unpacked boxes. That's Grandpa, whispered the cat to nothing, and dropped him on the old man's lap. So there you are, said Grandpa, waking up. What have you brought me this time? He put on his glasses and looked at nothing. Good heavens! Look, everyone! Look what Toby's found! Nothing looked up at Grandpa and saw a face he knew. The important thought inside his head popped open like a jack-in-the-box. The family gathered to look round. What is it, Grandpa? said the children. But Grandpa was busy rummaging along the, among the cardboard boxes. I know it's here somewhere, he said. Ah, there it is. He pulled open an old photograph album and opened it, turning the pages until he came to a fading photograph of a baby. That's me, he said. And that's Toby's great-great-great-great-great-great-grandfather. And this, he said, tapping the photograph and tickling nothing's tummy with his forefinger. This is little Toby. At last, nothing remembered who he was. Though he had no ears, nor whiskers, nor tail, and no stripes, he was for certain a little cloth tabby cat, whose name was not nothing but little Toby. And this, with a good wash, some scraps of material, and a needle, and some thread, is how he became little Toby once more. When the new baby arrived, little Toby was handed back to Grandpa, who tucked him carefully in the cot. And straight away, the new baby began to chew on his ear, which if it had been your ear would probably have hurt a little, but since it belonged to a little cloth cat, it did not hurt in the slightest. The end.